All right, guys, we are live. It's such a different feeling now that like I know mm. where you are in the house. I know what's outside. Right, it's right. very different. Yeah, I know. I know. I know what you mean. I actually thought about that thinking like, oh, now they know exactly like where I am. Like before it was like this mystery room. I remember when you came in, you're like, oh, this is where you do it. <laughs> yeah, I thought that door behind you led uh, like a direct path to the house. Like right. Yeah, no, I'm like very far away. In my so. head, when we were doing the pod before, I thought that door was like where the casita is, like that. Right. So you would that that's technically where Rob was staying, and I thought that. But Rob is yeah, I know that's me. what I thought yes. this room was that you did the pod out of. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you yeah, if you could upload the blueprints of the house that way, all the listeners know it kind of exactly. Yes, no problem. Yeah. Oh my god, I got this call. Okay, from this like unknown number, whatever. And you, my manager's number is unknown. And he, I, he, I just figured it's him. Cause he's like always who calls me, whatever. And I pick it up and it's like, Hey, is this Jamie Lynn Ziegler? I'm like, yeah. And this guy starts going on this like five minute sentence that like, you, you know, when somebody is talking so loud and so forcefully and literally not giving you a second to interject. Yeah. And he's like, I up. run a disability thing in Long Island and I want you to do a video for people. There'll be about 5,000 people that it'll be emailed to and not letting me say anything. And I'm trying not to be rude. Otherwise I would have fucking hung up because this guy clearly like wanted me to do something for like a disabled charity, whatever. I don't know. That's... So finally he gets to the end of it and I'm like, how did you get my number? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, uh, not very hard on the internet. No. Okay. Oh, no. And he's like, give me your email. I'll email you everything. I was like, yeah, no, you know what? Like, if you can find my number, then you can find my agent or my manager, send it to them and get back to me. And he goes, or I can send it to your address one, two, and reads off my fucking address. And I'm like, where did you get this? He's like the internet. And I was like, okay, I gotta go. And I just hung up and they've left four messages and he's had three other people call from different numbers. So now I literally just don't pick up my phone. Ugh. Unless I specifically know who it is. Okay. It's really annoying. So you, you, but it's a legit charity thing. Yeah. You should never talk to him again, but maybe you should leave the message for disabled people here. Is there anything? Hey, look, <laughs> I don't know what he's doing for disabled people, but if it's helping you, I am all for it. Please donate. Give all the money because it sucks being somebody who's disabled, trying to fit into a normal world and giving more things you know, to be more accessible so people can, can do the things that they want is great. The end. Wow. Yeah, Kasim can't even take his shirt off at the pool. This is a big disability. Yeah, we all, all got our things. <laughs> Not a He's doing just fine. Oh, please. COVID, COVID didn't stop this guy for a second. This is Kass has COVID, guys. COVID, co this is Kasim's dream, right, babe? <laughs> Uh, you're eating candy, you're playing video games. It's been yeah. great. I'm, I'm a, yeah. He said he's gotten a lot of things done. Working from that he home, yeah, I did all time. kinds of annoying errands today. Uh, I got into it with like the insurance agent. Ooh, uh, nice. It's a whole thing. But um, yeah, I mean, as we speak, I got some workers out in the yard installing the uh, all the stuff I need for my hot tub, my jacuzzi that well, I got. Well, where'd coming. you move the airstream? Right now, it's just off to the side, so I gotta sell it. Um, and if I don't sell it, here's the thing: when I bought it, I kind of I didn't know shit about anything when it in in regards to airstream. So I was like, "Ooh, this is." I spent forty k on it. It was probably worth thirty, and uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, "I just want that one." It was like the only one of that particular model, and. Um, so I bought it and it's just kind of, I bought it for a video podcast I did for my YouTube channel a few years ago. So it's just sat in my yard, hasn't been moved out of it once, not one trip. Um, I like it. I love it. It's great. It's fantastic. It's uh, a cool piece of Americana, but it, it, I get no use out of it. And mm. so the little piece of land that it's sitting on, 
also happens to be the Prime perfect spot for a jacuzzi. And that's what I went to go. Uh, so I bought one. It's being delivered in a couple of weeks. They have to put Sick. the whole pad out. Yeah, it's all this stuff that I was like, I'm going to be spending all this time here, even though I'll just be back to work next week. I would like to have a jacuzzi or something I can use in the backyard, yep. you know? Yep. And after oh, me and you Rob- going to slay. <laughs> after me and Rob- had uh, our, our nice little one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions at night at your place. I was like, oh yeah, I got to get me one of these. You know what? This just made me think of in my head because I told you, Cass, that you look like Leisure Suit Larry to me. That's not a compliment. Remember when That's you, not remember a compliment. Remember when you get- Slay it. Remember you get to the final like level and it's <laughs> him in a hot tub with the two strippers? <laughs> oh, I, I, I literally just got a flash of like Cass made it to the end of the game. Like you have to answer their questions right to like win it. And I, I remember because I was obviously under 18, I would always get them wrong because they like had some sort of like knowledge you needed as an adult. Yeah. You know, it'll, it'll probably just be filled with me and Rob and, uh, <laughs> you know, that'll be all the romance. That's not I bad. Need. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Well, the, for the first ban on man, uh, hot tub was me and Cutter. We got made fun of still to this day for it. I mean, that was a full swim. That was like laps in the pool and then the hot tub. Well, I think I just listen. We're as athletes, we understand right. that sometimes you have to, you know, you gotta those muscles, they tense up, and we need to be ready for a game at any time. Anytime. That's right. Anytime. Yami, you went camping. I want to hear all about it. Tell the people what you did. Yeah. So I went to my friend's wedding, um, up in Mendocino, California. So we flew into a place called Santa Rosa and then drove three hours to Mendocino, beautiful scenery, like looked fake. I've never been camping. I've never really been in a forest. <laughs> so like seeing, <laughs> seeing these huge redwoods and like the size of these trees and the color green very squatchy. Of like very squatchy very squatchy mm -hmm. and i'm like <laughs> i sent Cass a picture which by the way was the worst picture i had eaten an edible before if you can't tell it was like blurry and it kind of looks like trees i like sent it to show him when i because yeah. we were dming about something anyway and so everything looked like magical but it was shitty weather, unfortunately. It was like, but I guess it's always like that up there. It was like damp and gray and like, you know, kind of raining, but kind of not. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we stayed at this place called Mendocino Grove. Is my dear friend, Ryan, who I owe so much of like who I am today to. He's literally one of the pe closest people in my life to me and his boyfriend, Ori. And um, everyone gets tents. They're really nice brand new tents with like full size beds and little nightstands and a little, so it's not full camping, but then there's a, like a communal shower place, which are very nice. They're brand new bathrooms. Like, so it's like, you know, it's a step in the direction of camping. I'll probably never camp in my life, but this was fun. So it was just a really great weekend. I got to see some amazing people. I was with Emmanuel Shriki all weekend who I have not seen in over two years. So I got to spend my entire time with her and her boyfriend, Sam, and just her and I, when we get together, we don't stop laughing. Mm. So I had a very joyful, wonderful weekend seeing two of my dear friends get married. And it was also really cool because they both come from really conservative Jewish families and hearing like their dad's speeches and you know, just saying how inspired they've become over their like son's love. Yeah, even though they both had very hard times coming out to their fathers and their fathers had very hard times about it. It was really cool to hear them both individually like speak to their sons and say like, I'm so inspired by the way you love this person. It was really nice. That's really sweet. But all I think about when you say community showers is that Starship Troopers scene. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I'm talking about, Cass? It's, it's, yeah. it's the co-ed shower scene. Yeah. Uh, well, there's stalls, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not all just you're all under like one sh fighting for the shower head. No, it's <laughs> not like a locker room. You and Emmanuel pushing each other out of the way for some water. <laughs> you know, the story behind that shower scene. Um, Love to hear it. Was that 
the director uh, really wanted them to have this shower scene where there were men and women, um, both naked, like all the actors were naked in it. And one of the actresses is one of the actresses. Whoa. Is, am I saying that wrong Whoa. or right? The act, act try. Okay? It's act try. I'm still in that. Uh, COVID fog. I'm also trying to, uh, oh God, COVID. Uh, yeah. I have a big time. Real. All right. So Paul, you're right. I think it's actresses is, um, Paul Verhoeven, who's the director, uh, wanted this co-ed shower scene and he wanted all the, the actors to be naked in it. And one of the actors was like, we will do it naked as long as you're in the scene. Naked directing it. In, oh, in the scene with fuck. us. And so Paul Verhoeven awesome. is naked in that scene. That is a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, act, such a great movie. Uh, highly, highly entertaining movie. And it and it holds up if you go back and watch it. Emmanuel was in the sequel to that, I think. Wow, full Uh-oh. circle. I know. That's what Who's I just it, Which one's Emmanuel? Is she, was she the one in... Um, Emmanuel was Sloan on Entourage, uh, which is most people know her from. The, she's one of the most beautiful people yes. in the entire world. Yes, yeah. she I. She... <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> she we should have her come on. She's the best. Yeah. yeah. She's uh I remember watching on me to ask her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ask her. Just see if yeah, we'd love to talk about her current projects. We would love to. Yeah, tell her she'll we'll, talk about anything. We'll meet her in Mendocino for a little shower pod. <laughs> um, so wait, is is there stuff? about the camping thing that you're like, I, that part is horrible or is it, was it all what about toilet? Yeah, So like going to bed at night. Yeah. The toilet thing, like having to pee before you go back and mm-hmm. you know, that kind of cutter the night of the wedding drank so much that when we were going to bed, he kept, you know, normally we, I guess, is this a thing when people are drunk, they have to get up to pee a lot of times. You just have a lot of I do. Have- I do even yeah. with all the water I drink, I get up three well. times right before I go to bed. Right. Well, so he kept having to get up and like, he was like, fuck it. I'm paying right outside the tent. Like, mm-hmm. oh, hell yeah. He wasn't going to walk to the bathroom. Um, it, and then it was like when you go to bed and like, obviously we're like away from our kids. It's like a weekend, you know, we're like, oh, going to like hang out. And <laughs> it's, you're in the forest, it's dead quiet. So you hear like somebody step on a branch. Uh, so you got to be like, you know, uh, quiet sex. Like they hear a squeak, like whatever. It's just like, yeah, it was, it just felt a little like part of us were like, who cares? But then another part of it was like, we care, you know? So I don't know. That was the only hard part. There should be a time where like everyone agrees to have sex so that no one's listening to everyone. It should be like, all right, at nine o'clock <laughs> until right. nine 30, we all have sex. So then right. it's like, oh, no one knew who it was. All right. I'm going to start I mean, a new camping room. Next time. Right. Next time. Yeah, yep. sex hour. Yep. So what you were saying, bathroom is horrible, camping. Yep, yep. The staying quiet during sexy time staying is Staying quiet during sexy so time. That's not hard when I'm with a girl. Seems pretty pretty easy, actually. Uh, speak, <laughs> Stay quiet. Speaking of, Yami. Yes. I brought somebody over to your house. You did. How, I was up to you to talk about. Well, no, I listen, I said on the last pod, like, I don't want to get into the details of dating because then the person hears this and they don't know when you're kidding and when you're not. And, you know, right. we make jokes, whether it's me mostly or whoever right. that might be not nice or who know, you know what I mean? It's like the wrong thing could be said in this. So it's like, I'll talk about the fact that like, yeah, I'm dating whatever, but I just don't want to get into like specifics, yeah, of, yeah, you yeah. know, because the first time we talked about me not having sex for two years so much that when I did, I came on here and just like blabbed everything. Yes, you, know? you couldn't not. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, here's what we did. Like, it was a little <laughs> wild. I'm sure if I look back, I'd be like, Jesus. But uh, it was no, a big moment for all of us. It was. Yeah, yeah it, it was. was. Yeah, and I, and I felt that for the pod. So I was excited yeah. for mid-sex. I was excited for the pod. I was thinking- Well, the pod the took a turn. It was like going to be a entirely different pod. Like so we much all collectively the pod came. used to be about your celibacy. Yeah. Yeah, the pod had blue balls the, and the pod, that's right. Right. the pod came. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jamie, you know what makes me feel really good is that BetterHelp seems to be the sponsor that comes back for us the most, which means it's the one that maybe our fans or people who listen to this pod are using the most. And I think it's great that Mm -hmm. we might be making positive effects in people's lives. That's right. So this is now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. 
You know, I think that one of the things that people don't realize they really could use um, therapy about is burnout. And for me, burnout just means not taking enough time for myself. And sometimes the little hour or however long I allot for a therapy session can last me for a really long time. Like getting that moment to just think about yourself, worry about yourself, sort through your feelings with a professional. It's really prioritizing yourself, which helps you be the best person you can be. And so if you're wondering what BetterHelp is, it's obviously about therapy, but it's a customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's so much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. It's a really simple process that you do online. And our listeners will get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp by going to betterhelp.com dot com slash pajama. That's better H E L P dot com slash pajama. You know, if you're like me, you're always looking to make sustainable swaps throughout. If you mm. guys know that about me, I'm I'm always yeah, looking to get rid of something that's not good for me, not good for the environment, and swap it in with something that is. That's why I use real paper. It's my favorite sustainable toilet paper. Real Paper makes a sustainable toilet paper that uses fast-growing bamboo and is always shipped in plastic-free packaging, even down to the tape on the box. The great thing That's about so cool. yeah, the great thing about bamboo is that it's a grass and just like a lawn, it can be cut and regenerated without harming the plant or the soil. So they're able to harvest the same plant over and over instead of cutting down trees. And this is certainly preferable over the usual plastic wrap TP that comes from our old growth forests. The conventional stuff contributes to deforestation and habitat loss, all for something that we use once then flush down the toilet. Let me add, it's very soft, mm -hmm. very strong. And it's got- and it looks cool. It's got grippers bathroom. on it. It's like, yes. you know, it's, it's a problem and it's kind of gross to talk about. Some toilet papers, they just, I don't feel like they're really doing the job and yeah. you can use less squares here. And yep. get more if that makes any sense. And let me say, That's if you're right. somebody like me who does not have a car and or you live in a city where you walk to get your groceries or you like sometimes I take an Uber to get my groceries. So what's great is this. I came home one day. This box was just waiting for me right in front of where I live. That's right. Real paper is available, like Rob said, in an easy hassle free subscription or for a one time purchase on their website. All orders are conveniently delivered to your door with free shipping and 100 percent recyclable plastic free packaging. And if you head to realpaper.com slash pajama and sign up for a subscription using our code pajama at checkout, you will automatically get 30 percent off your first order and free shipping. That's R-E-E-L-P-A-P-E-R.com slash pajama or enter promo code pajama to get 30% off your first order plus free shipping. So let's stop flushing our forests. Like guys, I just lived in a forest for a few <laughs> days. We need to save mm. them and give reels Look tree at free paper. Over here. I try. That's right. Zero trees, zero plastic, zero compromises with real. So how, how was it? How was it for you? I mean, first of all, let's go back. When is the last time I introduced you to someone I was dating? I don't know. Uh, I mean, you didn't. I think it was just like we were be in New York and you'd be like, yeah, I'm hanging out with this girl. So like somebody <laughs> you actually like introduced me to. Was that your Rob impression? We got an yeah. exclusive. <laughs> yeah, uh, she, I'm hanging out with a gal. <laughs> They do nice. They take me places here. <laughs> here, uh, there. Yeah. I stay in a casita. <laughs> um, I think since you were 18, maybe. Yeah, it's been. And yeah, this it's very. Uh, how was well, it for you? I loved her. Yeah. I really had such a nice talk with her. She's really easy to talk to. She's really confident. She's really smart. Um, just like very easy going, like no nervous energy, like also not like a big energy, like just coming in, like just, she was great. I really, I texted you how much I enjoyed meeting her and her and I got like super deep at one point talking and she was awesome. Yeah. You're going to be like, she, yeah, that's it. No, <laughs> yeah. She's out of the picture now. No. Uh, yeah, no, listen, I think she's great too. Things are going well, you know, blah, blah, blah. But 
I do. Um, you know, there's there's like a there's a nice thing sometimes where like another guy tells you like, hey, that girl you're dating is pretty. And I got that when I went in your house, not from your husband, uh, from Bo, where when I <laughs> when, did he really No, but I introduced Bo to her and he went. <laughs> oh, yeah, and he, he just like pa- she's gorgeous and, and he paused and i was like oh i was like you know bo this is blah 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 blah, blah. this is bo and he looked at her and like froze and then looked at me and kept talking like he didn't even he had like a moment and i was like oh all right bo i meant to tell you before you came when i was telling bo that you were coming over he's like who's rob coming over with because i said them and i go oh like this girl that he's hanging out with he goes really Good for him. <laughs> Thanks, Bo. I know. He's so supportive. He really is. He is. He really is. Um, well, yeah, she's beautiful. No wonder he did. I can't wait to kiss. meet her. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I can't wait to had... meet the, uh, you know, new person in your life. It'd be nice for you. You, 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 know left what, Cass, off. you were able to meet so many people that I didn't. So, a whole year. Horses. I'm trying to think Rolls. who the last, I don't know if I've actually ever, have I met someone you've dated? I don't think so. Not, huh? not like officially dated, but you met somebody who I was, <clears throat> uh, a couple of them in the beginning when we were first. Yeah. Friend. But then when yeah. I moved out here, I was on my celibacy thing and then COVID happened. And then when I started dating again, you never, uh, there was one girl you dated for a couple months but I never actually met, met her. Yeah. I don't know why, but I mean, Oh, I think I do know why, because you matched with her on a dating app first. And at first we were like, Oh, this would be weird. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I think it just ended up like we just. Yeah. Didn't. Wanted to be a respectful. Maybe that may, I like that answer. Awkward. Yeah. Yeah. You know, while I we're on the, been... while we're on the subject and I'm just going to take just a quick second to uh, catch everyone up. Uh, because I don't really like having to do this part. But for those of us, those of you that are watching, you guys know that I, I was uh, dating Sarah Weinshank from the Shank pod. We are no longer dating. Just wanted to. Uh, I think people might maybe might have guessed because we just haven't been in the same uh, pod or in the same. You know, we're just not in each other's orbits right now. Everything is all good. We remain friends. Um, there's not anything really else to say about it other than we're, we're not dating. So I figure you guys know, I'd only mention it because she's been on the pod and we've talked about it. So I figure mm-hmm. I would do you guys the, the courtesy of letting you guys know. Is that, yeah. does that sound about right? No, it sounds about yes. right. I finally introduce a girl to Jamie and oh. you have to make it all about you. It sounds, yeah, it sounds exactly. <laughs> just, uh... well, just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's no, just the kidding. one you way I can never, do it. Um, yeah. Never yeah. do stuff like so that. But it, yeah, we're we, totally cool. Everything's great. Um, we're, we love we, her. She's, she's a fantastic person. Love her to death. And, uh, you know, please continue to support her and, and listen to her pod. She's still, yeah. you know, so funny. She has a pod she does on her own. She has one with. She's people. still funny without Kathy. She's, <laughs> she's still funny. She's still funny. We still like her. Uh, please don't tear her down online. No. Ew. Do you have like a little army of haters, Cass, that like go oh, after I people? I wish. For I you? wish I had that kind of juice. Send a little. Do we have a PJ Pants army or have we ever needed them? My army, oh, stand yeah. back and stand by. Oh, yeah. You guys were about to rally for the chairs for me. I forgot. Yeah. There's, there's mm-hmm. definitely an army. But, um, yeah. The reason I went down, you know, people think I went down to see Jamie for her birthday. What happened was we had word of the breakup and me and Jamie had to have a sit down and decide who we go with in the breakup yes, and we, who it, we kept. It yeah. It took three so days much. of deliberation. Yeah, it was yeah. a lot of deliberation. Bo had some things to say. I had Jack to present had an oral presentation. I had to have slides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a PowerPoint thing and I had to bring gifts. It's not and easy tribute. to percolate this crew. You know, <laughs> yeah. we're, uh, we're, 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 we stand with Cass. We're, we're, uh, but we've, we no also standing. are big yeah. fans of Shank. Yeah. Stands, we're big fans go, of Shank. Go stand with Shank. Go. Yeah. She's tr- a tremendous person. And, uh, yes. you know, you All know, right, it's Gab- nice. Gabby, let her in the zoo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's nice when you're older and you and you date and things don't work out. It's not like when you're uh, in your 20s and everything's so toxic and uh, it's like, oh, I don't, that per- I'm never going to speak to that person again. 
I'm I'm glad it. That's one of the benefits of being this age is kind of when things don't work. Each party's like, yeah, and it's not really working, and then you kind of just it's so crazy to think that you don't like talk to some people that you were like super intimate with. It is weird, right? Yeah, it's yeah. It's like uh, I don't know. It's like one just one of those things, I guess. But um, yeah, so we just move on as a pod, as uh, people. All we can do is just take it day by day. I'm trying. I, I find it to be actually like the opposite of how it was in when I was younger. Like you say, with all like the toxic stuff, it's like since I, you know, stopped dating the girl I was dating whenever it was a year ago or nine months ago, whatever. And now that like I'm dating other people, sometimes I want to reach out to her and be like, hey, like, thank you for being so great or like, thank you for like teaching me this or like little things that like I learned mm. from dating her instead of the opposite where it's like when I'm dating somebody new, it's like, yeah, fuck, fuck that. Like, you see, I moved on. Like, it's like, yeah. no, I'm like, oh, wow. Like these little pieces of me that I, especially after being single for two years to then started dating somebody. And then like, you needed that you need to, you, you really get a good look at yourself when you're with somebody else, like a better look at yourself. So you, it was really important for you to do that. And I think there's never a coincidence. Like, I think you needed to like have all the different types of like relationships that you did before you met this particular person, because I think it like helped set you up to be in a much better way to like present yourself. Not that you're a different person, but like, you just know, like a finesse of a relationship a little bit better, mm. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. And me and this person don't live in the same city. So like when I was in Austin, she came to visit me and we spent seven days together in the same Airbnb. And when you say like you learn about yourself when you're with somebody like in, uh, you know, just dating someone, it's like now try being like, oh, you're like, this is a new relationship. And now you're living together for seven days. Mm -hmm. It's like crazy. Oof. Like, yeah, you really, and like how things would have ended after that week of how I was 15 years ago or 10 years ago, compared to like how things went is a whole other universe. Yeah. You know, and it's just, and it's like, and I, and I sometimes like, I try and be present when we're having like a disagreement or whatever, but then there's other times where I'm like, Oh my God, if this was like 15 years ago, there would have been like yelling and door slamming and like, just how could I say mean stuff to this person where like, there's, there's none of that anymore, like in me. And I'm so grateful. You know what I mean? Of like when, when I'm, I have a tendency more to say like jabby stuff about somebody when I, when I really like them <laughs> than I do now when I'm like arguing with right. them or when things are bad, I'm just like, I, I really don't feel the that feeling that I used to have, which is like, you know, which is just like protecting yourself from being vulnerable by like hurting them, you know, saying mean shit to them before they mm -hmm. say mean shit to you or just making them feel bad because they're making you feel bad or whatever it is, you know. Look at us all grown up, huh? Yeah. How have your eight hours a day of video games been, babe? <laughs> I'd say uh, pretty good. I'm playing Jedi Fallen Order right now, which is a Star Wars game. I'm really enjoying it. And, um, you know, it's Look been great. I'm playing It Takes Two. A lot of good gaming going on right now. COVID is really almost like a blessing in disguise. You know, I look, f I look mm -hmm. forward to having the summer of Cass. Now that I'll have some antibodies out there, I'll be. This is very experiencing true. Life. Get, like, yeah, I got a, I got a very busy next couple of months, but a bunch of conventions. Comic-Con is coming up. So I'm, it's kind of a relief because I always kind of felt like up until last week that I was like just always dodging a bullet mm -hmm, <clears throat> and they've mm -hmm. been sending me to these conventions. And every time I didn't get sick, I was like, oof, man, you really, you know, skated uh, by that. one. And then so now I feel like I don't have to worry. I'll still, you yes. know, be conscious and wash my hands and all that shit. But now I'm not going to just be carrying around that sort of like foreboding sense of it around the corner. I could get sick. And so that's kind of yeah. nice. There's a freedom there. I honestly, the, I was hoping if I was going to get it, it would have just been at this wedding because I start work in a month, July 7th. So I'd rather get it over with before work and then feel much more secure yeah. for the summer. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, there was 
like a a rough (laughs) two days and then like maybe some lingering stuff for the next like four days after that. But other than that, I, you sound okay. I feel fine. I feel like I, my energy levels are back to where they were, but there was a couple of days where I was just, my whole body was sore and I was like dizzy and lethargic and uh, you could barely hot tub shop. Oh, it took so much out of me to, to narrow down which hot tub I wanted to go with, but I did it. <laughs> That's really requires. a Oh, lot of I did power. it. I did it. So I, we're so proud of you. Man. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. No wonder we went with you instead of Shank. Yeah, <laughs> you're you just the perseverance you show in times like this. It's it's inspiring. Yeah, it's really yeah. shown me who I am deep down in the core. Mm. And now that Rob's, yeah. you know, moving to Texas, I feel like this hot tub mm. is just going to soften the blow a little bit, you know. Oh, for sure. We haven't fully decided that, but where it seems like the uh, it seems like the mo- and that's the thing. It's like. When everybody talks to me about like, oh, are you going to move to Austin? Are you going to do this? It's like, and then like some people have been like, well, if you do, that's a big move. And I'm like, I, besides Kasim and Air One, I feel zero attachment to LA. Like, is there anything, no Air One in uh, Austin? Only in LA. That's the only place it exists. Oh. Yeah. I had it today. Blew me away. Oh, I had have it you, yesterday. Uh, I just was like, oh. What do you mean when you say had it today? I, like from their bar and their food. Yeah. For me. So they, they have we like a, today. um, <laughs> I've had just about enough. I, they, they have like a hot food section that to me, yeah. the food in that hot food section is as good as any restaurant. And they change it up. They change it up all the time, but they have the classics, oh, you know, they always right. have the salmon, like the sweet potato, the sweet potato. Oh, they, yeah, they'll move things in and out, but sometimes they have this fried rice. That is unbelievable. What'd you get it? What'd you get today? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you saying it like a sex phone operator? <laughs> what you got it? What you got it, big boy? What you got it? Oh. I want. I'm hungry. I want Ooh, to eat what, what you got? You got it? I got. Uh, I just got salmon, and I made my own like hand rolls with like their Air One ginger dressing and brown rice and wasabi. And I, you know what? I I I've just recently gone on a little kimchi. Mm, you like a little fermented Ooh, kimchi? That's, a little kimchi. That's pretty cultural for my boy Rob right there. Well, what happened was, hey, some people like to shit on Texas. Oh, it's Who so got white. You to try it's so this. Kimchi? Um, girl. No, we were. <laughs> <laughs> we people shit no. on Texas. Jamie, oh. Jamie, we went out to dinner. Me, Jamie, A and sushi, Cutter. Sushi? No, oh. uh, <laughs> sushi, sushi. We went to uh, that that restaurant by Carve. And they oh, had yes. kimchi fried rice. And I was eating oh, that's fried right. rice and it just put a little taste for it in my mouth. And when I got home, I was making my kind of salmon rice thing. And I was like, you let me throw what? some kimchi in this. You know what you would love? Get yourself to one of the farmer's markets around. It's mm-hmm. actually, other than you two, the only thing I miss about Los Angeles is Dave's Korean Gourmet. Okay. You go to his stand and they have kimchi. They have all these different flavored tempeh that tastes like literally the best chicken you've ever had, but it's tempeh, tempeh, tempeh. How you say it? No one knows. I don't know. No one actually knows. (laughs) And they have this like spicy chopped veggie thing. It's like this container and these tiny, tiny, tiny little finely chopped. And it's like a fermented pickly taste and you put it on anything and it takes it to another level. It tastes so fucking good. And then he has a veggie broth, which is kind of like, bone like has all the elements of like bone broth but it's vegetarian you heat that shit up mm. hell yeah you are hungry huh amy mm-hmm. i could tell it's that green face. gourmet don't sleep on it <laughs> yeah <laughs> i i've been doing i've been uh I fr- i'll look in the fridge it's like this uh a spicy Korean uh, flavor of uh, kimchi that I've been having. I just you just take a spoonful and you throw it in your, mm. your rice or throw it with your chicken and throw it in. It just adds that nice little, you know, the I was, Texas, that Texas pizzazz, I like to call it. The the way I, I think now I'll describe Erewhon because I was trying to just it to somebody who had never been and i was like well it's like an upscale like bougie whole foods but i don't think that really encapsulates what it's it like is. a it's it's like a market well you just it's said like it, a, it was, it's like a farmer's market but like in a store it, ha- it has yes. super fresh produce but then they also have like these like condiments and things and sauces that you you know won't find in any other 
That's right. right. And juice bar, elixir bar, tons of like packaged things that are super healthy, like supplements, a a meat and fish area. You can buy produce, that kind of produce there. Yeah. I'm a like, I'm a good way to explain it too is like, I'm a big food guy, big health guy, love eating healthy. This 10% of the stuff there, I look at and I go, that's for crazy. That's for like white people that I've never even Mm -hmm. spent time with. You know what I mean? Like where it's like, we're leaving out the most important part. Mm. It's, astronomically expensive. Oh, it is just, but like they'll have like camel hump fat juice. And like, you know, when they, like you go to like a place like Whole Foods and there'll be like different green juices. And in this place, they're like blue. Yes. And like that's right. these colors of this stuff that you're like, I've never you even seen. go up seen. to the bar and you're like, I have, this is like pre-COVID. You're like, I have the sniffles and diarrhea. And he's like, one moment, please. Take a shot of this. Yeah. Home. Yeah. And there, there was also one time where I went in there and I was getting bone broth and the guy told me to put like, I think it was deer antler in it. And he's like, I, yeah, he's yeah. Like, we'll throw a little deer antler in there. He's like, it'll get any like said like the nicest way you can for like, it'll make your dick hard. That's right. Yeah. That's what I was that like. Does. Yeah. Throw it in there. Mm-hmm. Deer antler. Yeah. yeah. Air one. Check out air one. I would if if you love food. No, I don't want to say this because I don't want people to like do this and then be like, Rob's an idiot. But like for me. If I took a trip to LA just to go to Air One, I'd be like, I love this place. <laughs> like, it's 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 really that amazing to me. Like, any because here's the deal: when I go to fucking uh, when I go to hot food sections in any other supermarket, I'm I won't even touch it. You're revolted. No. Yeah. So I go from not even it's it's like the sushi we talked about, right? The eel was the best dish because I went from hating it to bang. Mm-hmm. It was the the best. I literally go from I cannot eat prepared foods at Whole Foods and stuff like that because I think it's disgusting to Mm -hmm. I think about this food every single day Mm -hmm. and I love it. People also love their pizza. They're different pizzas. I I oh. probably wouldn't think that that's the best, but they just they, they, and they have good sushi. Yeah, everything. Yeah, we've, everything. we've said a lot about it. It's the place to go, but you are going to spend a little bit more money. So oh, so much prepared. money. It's it's horrible. Be yeah. prepared, guys. It's, it's bad. Like I go to hurt. Whole Foods now, and I'm like, oh, look at this. Like Whole Foods is a deal. Everything's on sale. Yeah, Whole Foods is a value center. Blue light special. Oh to yeah, everyone. and listen. I really feel like I spend my money on nothing else. Like mm-hmm. there is nothing else around. But like when it comes to food, I'm just like, hey, this is, you know, this is what makes me wake up and feel good. So and and we also talked about if I could fucking figure like the thing that bothers me the most is like, yeah, to eat healthy, you have to spend more money. It's like, so what is the, it's just it's so sad. It's so fucked up. Yeah, it's very fucked up. Um, <clears throat> got some emails. Great. Yeah, let's go to email. Also, I want to say if anybody hasn't watched Christina P's special on Netflix, mm-hmm. they should check it out. Yeah. Very funny. She's obviously very funny. We all know that. And then Tom Segura's uh, book came out and he gave me one when I was down there. Very, uh, very Did sweet. Did you read it? I, I read some. Yeah, I didn't finish it yet. But the uh, yeah. yeah, I was going through it. What, what's what's going on over there, Cass? You all right? Somebody Sorry. trying to break in? No, I was looking at the security cam. I got, I got a bunch uh, of people in my my yard right now. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm uh, watching Jack in his bed right now. <laughs> aw. you still do that, yeah. huh? He's cr- well, no, because Cutter is at Bo's baseball right oh, now, so I'm just watching yeah. to make sure he doesn't get up and leave. Poor, poor Jack with those boogers. I feel so bad for it him. Doesn't you know what? It wasn't that bad in L.A., but here it got bad. The second we got back, it was bad again. It must be his allergies. His book. I mean, he just has a constant flow. Constant, of, constant. It's terrible. And what I was it's thinking so is bad. like, is that what men just walked around like before, like the age of like cameras? And then like, you know, if you go back like <laughs> 500 years or a thousand years or this, did men just have like snot? like running from their nose directly into their mouth. I think even those people would feel like they want to wipe that off. Yeah. But then like you're right. That's wipe, what I wonder. I'm like, how are you day? walking around with it? Like just hanging down your fucking lip. I know. And there's other times where like, like he'll just be like, whether it's like one of those like Jack moments where he's like, gazing into your eyes or like, you know, I would sit across from yeah. him when we would eat food and stuff. And like, he would just be looking at me and, and like my brain would be like, 
God, this kid is so oh, like, you know, because you'd go from like, oh, my God, look how cute. He is. And then you'd look yeah. down and you just see like the boogers were like as he's chewing food, like the boogers are going I into know. his mouth. Felt so. But then again, like you said, oh, they would wipe it off. But like there were times where you would wipe his nose. I would wipe his nose. Cutter would wipe his nose. And then like it's right back. Yeah, it's right back. It's so crazy. What? I, don't, I don't know. I feel oh, like last time I was there, his nose was bleeding. He had all. That's right. Yeah, full on nosebleeds. That's right. Poor guy. You know what? So he's so sweet, though. He's like the things he thinks of at four years old. He was staying with my mother in law while we were at the wedding and he slept in bed with her. And he looked at her, she said, before they went to bed one night. And he goes, Noni, you live here by yourself? And she was like, Yeah. And he goes, Aren't you sad? And Aww. she was like, No, no, I'm not. And he goes, Well, that makes me really sad. And I was like, what four-year-old like think even thinks about that? Like he was sitting, he's cutter. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. His he has the same brain as my husband. I love I love my favorite thing about Jack is that he like shares all of his uh neuroses, you know, because that's my favorite thing in the world. People who like share their neuroses. Oh, like he says them all out loud. Yeah, yeah. you know, like he'll just be like, why is that I want that? Like, why, you know, when we're like a, on a ride for whatever, like yes. you, you know, like he just says these things where you're like, Oh yeah, like that's 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 it's always a good point. You know? Yes, he does. It's always, yeah. always pretty deep. Yeah. yeah, you're like, wow, are we all sad for Nani? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, here's some emails. This one's from Luann from Northeast Pennsylvania. Hey, Jamie, Rob, and Cass. I started listening to your podcast late. Heard about it on Talking Sopranos. Shout out to the... Uh, do they still do that pod? No, Shout it's over. Those guys. They, okay, got, they yeah. got to their last episode and that was it. Uh, but thanks to my job, I've caught up on all the episodes in three weeks. Wow. I pick orders for Thrive Market and listen to you guys. Most of the time wow. laughing out loud and having people give me weird looks. Jamie, <laughs> I've been such a fan of yours for such a long time. I've been watching Big Sky from the beginning and was so excited when you came on and even more when I learned now that you're a regular. It was the best moment when you kill. Well, there's a spoiler coming up here. We talked about We'd, it. Okay. All right. Great. It was a best moment when you killed Bryce, Bruce or Bryce, Bryce, Bryce and said, I thought that would be harder. I oh, did. Jamie, you little, you little yeah. killer. It Don't was such a full that. circle moment. I thought a very Sopranos moment, yes. like a, like Tony would be proud moment. I, yes. I know on the talking Sopranos, it was always a conversation of who took over after the blackout. A lot of people actually said, Meadow, what are your thoughts on that? Could you see Meadow yeah. stepping into those shoes? It's so funny you say that because literally when we finish shooting that scene, like a bunch of people in the crew were like, I felt like I was watching like Meadow kill someone. I was like, I feel that too. There's a lot of my character, Tanya, that she's like kind of becoming Meadow-ish. Like she's, she's like acting like she knows more than she does maybe. And like, mm -hmm. she just, she's trying to like, find some authority or some kind of, you know, co faux confidence. And I don't know, it sometimes it feels like oddly related. So I think it's cool that you said that because we all kind of felt that way a little bit, yeah. but would Meadow have taken over the family? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I mean, could she have? Know. Sure. Yeah. She's a very small girl. Also, Jamie, the, I, I had to go to our uh, pajama pants email for something, which I never do. Like I didn't even, I have to like, how do I get to this? And like trying to figure out and I got yeah. to it. And uh, there was I saw like a bunch of email and because I guess like two episodes ago, you were like, oh, well, this is all the email we have or whatever. And like people were like, as soon as I heard that Jamie was upset <laughs> that there weren't enough email, <laughs> like I had to write in and let you know. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, you might be able to see that one if it's, if it's um, I think it was yeah, just yeah. Like in, uh, <laughs> in the like, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah, yeah. There, or, there's yeah, still yeah. more to this one. <clears throat> Rob, I'm actually so proud that you figured out shit and have come so far. No, it sounds weird coming from someone who doesn't know you, but I'm a mom. So when you recognize that in other people, you acknowledge it. It's awesome. You found your own way and don't give a fuck what Hollywood or anyone else says. I screamed so loud when I saw you and Jamie on that commercial for the Super Bowl. I made more of a reaction to that than when my husband saw the Eagles win the Super Bowl. He was in, <laughs> he was in shock. Poor guy. That was the highlight of the night for me. Thank you for making it. Cass, I didn't know of you before this pod, but fuck, am I glad I do now? You're hilarious, and the three of you fit so well together. 
this has by far become my favorite pod to listen to and am constantly telling my husband about it to the point I just say, Rob said, or Jamie said, like I'm talking <laughs> about friends. <laughs> the uh-huh. hairy butthole story is one of our favorites because let's just say been there, done that. Looking forward to many more pods and laughs. Sincerely, Luann. Thanks, Luann. Thanks, Luann. Thanks, was Luann. Nice. I, you know, one of my favorite things about like our community that that started happening is when they call each other babe. <laughs> I don't, yeah. It's just like my fa- it just feels so good to me when I see like there'll be comments or they'll, you know, I was just traveling for a month and like came back and I was like, oh, what's been going on in like the pajama pants universe? And like uh-huh. I went to look and somebody was like, I think somebody said like, you know, I don't know how Rob sat like that cross-legged for a whole pod oh, yeah. and like his uh-huh. knees didn't blow out. And the next, the next person commented and they were like, do more yoga, babe. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, like, I love babe so much because it can be everything. Like it yes. could be like, oh, like good for you, babe. Like, you know, like that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Or it could be like, oh, I don't know, babe. Like you might want, like it could be, it's uh, the babe says a lot. Right. This is reminding I was just listening on the plane the other day to Mike Myers on the Smart List podcast. Have you heard the Smart List podcast? No. Mm-hmm. It's Jason Bateman, um, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett. It's great. And they interview really cool people and they're interviewing Mike Myers. And he was saying it was so cool and like means so much to him that like still to this day, like jokes he made are words people say like swing and like oh behave and like all those things like he said he's like that's one of like the most like (laughs) ultimate condiment yeah like that like his comedy like has become part of the zeitgeist and like what people say and you've done that with bed well that's a credit to all of us really you know not me. I didn't do that. No, you were there. You were there in support. Um, oh, here's and, that email. And Perino. And per, Perino. Yes, shout out right. to Perino. Happy oh, birthday, yeah. Yuri. They're happy in birthday, Yuri. Italy yeah, right now enjoying birthday. their life. And I just want to so say, sweet. Joey sent me a text three days ago, and it was one of the sweetest texts I've had in a while. And he texted me. He said, I had a dream that I hugged you. Oh, how sweet. What a, what a guy. What a guy, that Perino. Those, those two we'll be friends with till we're dead. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. And that's, and that's, and that's what you, God forbid, I don't think they will ever get divorced, but if they did get divorced or how we talk about like later in life, how things are this, like they would both so champion to They'd be still friends live with together both and of be them. Divorced. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, I don't know how they wouldn't be They'd be like, this is easier if we just stay together and not move our stuff. <laughs> yeah. Go do your thing. I'll go do mine. 10 years later. This one's from Mel. She says, I've been listening to you guys for a year and finally decided to email because on the last episode, Jamie hung her head down so sadly and said, I'll email us when Cass said there were only five emails. I wanted to say for Christmas last year, everyone in my family received a tushy. Thank you. Oh, Thankfully. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thankfully, my family is pretty small and using the pajama pants code <laughs> helped. So, uh, so much, but anyway, everyone in my family, including me has one and we don't know how we ever went without it. Yes. Wow. Yes. Also, so cool. I'm not sure if you're still promoting man cave. Um, but that is what I did for birthday presents as well. My husband still has beef jerky from six months ago. Oh, so yeah. thank you. Your boxes. podcast has benefited not only myself because I enjoy listening to all you so much, but also my family because of your promotions. Well, that's nice to hear. I'm not sure if it has been mentioned before. So I thought I would ask, do you sell merch? I started to Google that, but then of course I get 10 million images of literally pajama pants. Anyway, (laughs) I can't even express to all of you how much I look forward to each new podcast every week. Your chemistry is amazing and honestly rare to find in a lot of podcasts. Even though I'm a huge Sopranos fan, I truly believe it is that chemistry that brings us all in and makes us Feel like we're all sitting right there with you all. Love to you all, Melanie. Thanks, Thanks Melanie. Melanie. Um, yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I'm, we don't do the man cave thing. I think that was just for Christmas, but who knows? You know, who knows? If We've always had really cool sponsors. Yeah, Absolutely. and the best is when you get a sponsor like Tushy, where I before we ever had Tushy as a sponsor, I was saying everyone should get a bidet. When we had nobody, mm-hmm. no, we had no you ads. You had I was been. like, you, you had were. it changed. I mean, it's just such a changer. And uh, we don't do merch. We did one batch of merch. And I think there's like still hats left. You could find them where Cass Gracias, California. 
Yeah, graciascalifornia.com. And then just type in uh, pajama pants in the search bar. You should find our hat. Um, there may be a couple hoodies and some um, uh, off sizes left. Maybe not. It's been What's a while since I've looked. I don't know. Small. Like a very small. <laughs> yeah, I think we had a couple extra, of extra. couple small. Oh, you you know what I wanted to bring up too. Uh, so on Christina P's special, she's like, there was there. Remember on TV, there used to be a thing that was like, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Oh yeah, yeah. I was yeah. in Atlanta during the Scary Atlanta child fuck. murders. Yeah. So it, it was. Well, it was in New York. In New York, they would do it every night at 10 mm-hmm. p.m. Oh, yeah, 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 but I think you it know started because started. of what happened. Yeah, during the the child murders in Atlanta. Um, oh, I got a my hot tub guy's calling me. Can you guys hang for one sec? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Sorry. That is. We got to leave that in to let people know. You know, everybody's oh, yeah. like, oh, Casim's oh, the everyman. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Leave that in. So, Yami. So it's like, you know, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Yeah. And and I think. To back in the day when I was like eight years old, nine years old, and like I was sitting next to my mom, and they would say that, and then my mom would be like, "Yeah, my son's right here." Like da da da. But then cut to like eleven years old, twelve years old, thirteen years old, like all the way up until whenever that like every time they said that, there had to be even if it was like one percent in my mom's head of like, no, like you know, like yeah, I have <laughs> no idea where the fuck he is, and he's like eleven years old, and he keeps coming home smelling like booze, <laughs> like. You, you were allowed to be out that late, that young. I, I started drinking and like smoking when I was 12. But like, yeah, starting at like 11, it was like you do whatever. And by 12, I was full on like drinking wow. in like the projects uh, or like on like somebody's stoop or like smoking weed and like doing. So like 12 years old, 13 years old. And then people think like, well, when you're 16, you got a cell phone. But a lot of people who are younger don't understand what a cell phone was like when we were 16, which was. If somebody needed you, they would call you. But usually my cell phone wasn't even charged. Like, yeah. Or like, I don't like there were times where it was like, oh, I didn't even bring it because whatever. It wasn't that thing that is today of like, I'll be right there. I'm five minutes away. I'll see you in the, do you need anything from the store? Do you like where you could just texting is super easy. Like, first of all, no one texted in the beginning. And then when you did text, it took forever because you'd have to be like, you'd have to hit the button. Email like through my BlackBerry more than I would text. Yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, so even like, you know, when I was 16 and I finally got a cell phone, my mom didn't know where I was at 10 o'clock. You know, it wasn't like, Hey, we're like, we're now it's like when people have a cell, it's like, I I feel like I always know where you You are. Track your kid. Yeah. Whereas like, I can't imagine people with their kids, but like, I always feel like I know where you are or Cassie is or like wherever because of like how things go. But when I was, yeah, when I was 12 years old until I moved out of my house, like at 10 p.m., my mother never had a clue where I was. Mm-hmm. Never. There, there was not a wow. and, and I think about that now and I'm like, wow, that because like, you know, I always back in the day when it was like, all right, be safe. And then it was like, oh, just let me leave. Like, let me right. was like the guy in uh, in uh, what is that? Uh, Love on the spectrum. Where he's like, oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> oh, mom, <laughs> oh. Yeah, indeed. Jamie, Jamie, if and by the way, if Christina P is listening to this, Jamie also, if you're gonna do one thing, watch Love on the Spectrum. I'm going to. The I'm f- going to all you have finishing to do is Yellowstone get, and then I will. All you have to do is get to the end of the first episode and you are beyond hooked. Shout out to Solomon. Whew. What Sol- a show. Shout Solomon is who you're shouting out. Yeah, shout out to Solomon. He made oh. the show for me. Oh, oh incredible. Wow. Uh, he was he was so upset over that phone call about being let on. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Are you serious? If, you, if are you serious uh, right now? If you guys aren't haven't watched that show, man, I just don't know what. That's one of those things where, like, if somebody was like, "I watched that on your recommendation and I didn't like it," it's like, well, then I. Pfft. Like Look, we I get it if no you don't problem. go to Air One. There's Air Ones yes. aren't everywhere. But if you aren't watching Love on the Spectrum, you you have access to it. It's on Netflix. You just got to do it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And even if you went to Air One and were like, it wasn't for me, I could understand. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I get if it. If you walk in there for with less than $100, I don't know if you're taking advantage of, of what Air One has to offer. I really yeah. don't. Jamie and Kasim for my birthday would get me like two hundred and fifty dollar <laughs> gifts certificate, yeah. and it would buy lunch. <laughs> yeah. The place is obnoxious. No, I bought bone broth yesterday. It was like twenty five bucks for like 
Disgusting. a large cup of bone broth like this. But you, you added Disgusting. you you got you you had some well, extras I the, in there. Yeah, I got the turmeric. <laughs> I got the ginger, dude. But that shit healed me more than anything I've I've had. I've eaten or drink since I got COVID. I mean, there's it's it's there, man. It helps. Yeah, you pay for you pay for your health. That's what I'm realizing. Like you, you know, I I don't I don't go to the doctor. I'm saving money on the doctor and spending it at Air One. Do you ever think like how? I guess Jamie already has kids, but like, do you feel like you will be um, as lenient or I don't know if your parents were lenient or not, Jamie, but will you give them the same freedom that you had? Um, or would you make them I like, would... have, like, cause now we have find my friends or you could put a fucking air tag right. on your kids or something like, how are you going to manage them? As much as I want to say, I'll be like more lenient. I understand like the fear and like, where's my kid and like yeah. anything that could happen to him. So I don't, th I think I'll be the same. I think I'll have similar like limits set, but I'm going to be cooler about how I tell them why the limits there are. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a like, good point because you already I just are. Feel like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just feel like I'll communicate a lot better with them than where it was just kind of like, rudely told to me what it was going to be. And I was like, mm -hmm. yelled at if I didn't obey. Yeah. Like my parents didn't want me to do drugs because their, their reasoning was, Oh, so we don't hit you. Like you don't do drugs. So you don't get hit. You know, there wasn't any, like it'll send your life down the wrong path. I think maybe right. they just assumed we knew those things, but if, if there was like a, you know, parents do the best they can, but if there was a, a softer way to let me know, Right. Why they were strict on certain things or why, you know, certain they had ideas about things in the way that they did. I would have uh, you know, probably responded a little bit better as a kid. Well, I can imagine that that type of conversation sticks in your kid's head when they have to make the choice or not more than if you fucking yelled at them or just said this is what it is. Like when you give them the up, when you give them and empower them with all of the information, then they can actually make a decision for themselves. Mm -hmm. But if you don't give them that information, I don't think it's fair to like limit your kid without letting them see if they can handle it. That being said, I know that the people probably be like, yeah, but they could fucking get in a situation where they could die. Like, of course I get it, but right. there's fine lines everywhere. But I think my method is gonna be pointing out the uh, most like hated person in our family and be like, yeah, well, you keep doing drugs. You're going to end up like, aunt, uh, you know, like that one. Yeah. That's that's, <laughs> but I, I think you like hear this guy's Rob's going to have kids. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, haven't you said that you were probably going to have kids? I don't know if I remember you talking about this on the pod. No, you... I've, I've always said that it certainly hasn't changed in the last month. Jamie, let's be easy. <laughs> but, but <laughs> well, he's open to it. Yeah. But no, no, here's always been my <laughs> answer is that I don't want to have kids now because I love my life so much. I am too selfish. I don't want to give up my time sure. and it's not, but I always see myself at 65 years old being like, fuck, like I, I should have had kids. Really? I always felt that way. Yeah. But it's so just the now. I don't but Rob, you have had 37 years to be selfish. Like, can't you look at it that way? Like I get like you and you still you still have time. Like you could do this when you're 40. But like I just. I, that just makes me sad to know that, you know, at 65, you're going to regret it. I just think it's such a, it's so hard and it ruins your life in so many ways, but it also like, it's kind of what life is about. You like, know what I think of it as? And I, and I, <laughs> I totally agree with Jamie. No, I want to hear. I, I don't know why you're laughing This guy's so been hard. locked up for 10 days. Baby. I'm stir crazy. I am. I, was like, I lost it on the phone today with the insurance lady. But Ooh. I look at it like it was, it's, it's another. She ain't got out just in time. <clears throat> she, uh, by the skin of her chinny chin chin. Um, so anyways, it it's was hair, uh, skin of her teeth. It's okay. skin of her teeth. Yeah. COVID brain. I knew, yes, uh, yeah, I knew it was weird as it came out. It's a whole other part of life. Like that is a, like in an, an enrichment that I'll never get to experience without having kids, like a whole experience that is so fulfilling on another level mm -hmm. that I will, as a single guy or a guy that doesn't ever have kids, I can enjoy 
a, a very comfortable, uh, fun existence. And there's all kinds of things I can do, but there's this thing that I'll never get to experience if I, if I don't have this family. And in my head, it's like, I'm sitting on like a giant front porch. I've got all this grass and like, I've got my, my kids over here and their kids are playing like in the sprinkler and I'm sitting there fucking uh, with a book in my hand with a lemonade. And every once in a while I look up and I go, yeah, like I helped, wow. I helped do all this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I raised these fuckers. And that's that to me, I don't know if it's just a specific thing with specific people, but I like this visualization. You oh have. yeah. I think I'm in the Let's South. Manifest it. Yeah. 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 I South, think maybe I'm in y- Georgia. Maybe Texas? Yeah. I, I might oh. own a few people. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole level. Oh, of, yeah. Yeah. I'm a, I, it's like a sugar plantation. You brown people are wild. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Yeah, but see, here's the problem that I think about too, right? Sometimes, like, obviously a big part of it is like finding the right person, and blah, blah, blah. But the other thing is like, if, <laughs> it's a big blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, if, if you do, if I do go, well, when I'm 65, I might regret it. Like, there's so many people I know in my family included where they're fucking 65 and their kids don't talk to them. So it's like, or, or yeah, but they're, they're not great. You're a great wait, guy. Wait, let me, I knew you were yeah. going to say that. So I had something ready <laughs> or let's just say they have a job that brings them to the other side of the country. So you only see them once a year or you see them twice a year. So now it's like, okay. You're thinking so many like uncommon things. No, no, like no. Most Jamie, people Jamie, speak wait, to their parents. Jamie, I hate to cut you off, but no, I think what Chasm <laughs> is talking about is the uncommon thing sitting on your front well, lawn that was with an the extreme. watermelon. Okay. Whatever. There's a, there's, there's a fluctuation of that and chaos and fighting and all of the things. Yeah, I think most people them. see their kids and their grandkids. What? 12 times a year. How many that, times, how many times a year one do of your those, parents, how many each times one well, of they live times very far away, but that's what so I'm saying. It's, there's four or five times a year, they four or five them. times a year. I think, I think there's much lower than that, but even like the high, like I know I would never be like, what am I going to do? Live next door to my kids for their whole one life? time like, of that one family reunion. And you don't see them at all for the rest of the year. That one time to me is but worth. you're talking I'll go about down, extended I'll go down to family. Jamie's house and watch the Jack eat his boogers. <laughs> it's fine. Cutter's mom, when we lived in LA and she lived in Westlake, would come to us three times a month. Like, you know. Yeah. Some of the, I'm I'm most envious of my friends whose families are like they get to see each other all the, all time. the time. But me like too. I would still do it even if I only saw my kids once a year. Like to me, that that is just a part of it, you know, like that's just people need part of knowing that I raised a kid who's succeeding out in the world who can't see me as often as maybe I'd like is like, that's okay. Right. Maybe after 18 years, you want to see your kids four times a year. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to give yourself the opportunity to try it, I think. Mm -hmm. And if you already know that there's like a future version of yourself that's coming back to you right now as you're 35 and it's like, I'm 65 and I regret it. It's like you already have the warning. You know what I mean? You you can go out there and and fuck it, dude. Even if it doesn't work out with whoever you're with and you're like a single guy, you know, you at least have a you're a single dad. And like now you have a kid and it's still probably every single dad out there is like, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, it's like it's still. Yeah. But then you talk nice. to him on the side and then you hear like there there are people who have come up to me on the side who are Mr. Like, oh, I love my this and that. And they grab me on the side and they go, don't do it. Yeah, don't do I it. don't have kids. Don't well, get married. Unhappy. Don't do this. There's yeah. a lot. Look, the. To, to your point, there's a lot of ways that could really f- massively fuck up your life because now you're not just responsible for yourself. I think part part of it is like the stress of having to be responsible for another person's life potentially. Well, that's all of it. And, and I the, get the that. shopping at first that's a lot of stress. Years, yeah. Shopping you at requir- shopping at Air One ends immediately. Mm, yeah. That's a you're that's done. the biggest downside to me. You know, I spend so much money. All the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like you're Cutter and I four. were saying, we're like, we would be so rich if we didn't have kids. Like buying for four, paying for our nanny, paying for clothes, paying for it's a camps, different kind of paying rich. for schools. You spend you know. so much money and 90% of the time they're mad at you. But 
<laughs> Not 90% of the time. What do you mean? No. no. All we're saying is just pay attention to that 65 year old Rob yes. that's coming to visit you. Just give him just But mind he has him. other things to say. He has mind other things him. to say. He doesn't just what else? say. Uh, well, what else well, here's the other thing that I fear, right? Is like how you say, well, you've had so long to just enjoy your this and that. To be honest, I feel like I just started really appreciating and enjoying my life only, you know, a few years ago. Like before that, it was just fucking chaos all the time. Like, and I was just killing myself and abusing my body. And that, like, I'm just at a time, like for 20 years, I woke up feeling like shit every day, like a fucking mm-hmm. 15 years, whatever long, addicted to drugs. Where are this? Where's the next fucking thing? Like always feeling like shit. Like I just got to a point in my life where it's like, I wake up and I'm like, oh my God, I feel great. I want to do this. I want to go for a while. Like I find the joy and just like, oh, there's a nice breeze. And like, I feel like, yeah. so it's like, I, I don't know. Like I get it. I'm 37, but like for so much of that time, like I like the years I lived in Vegas, it was just like death. Give yourself a few more fucking years that you're a dude. You don't need to worry about it as much as women need to. You know, yeah. they got to like, oh, they got up. Their eggs are going soft and then they got to freeze them. And then, you know, there's a whole thing. But you're uh, you've got a lot more gas in the tank. And if you wanted right. to wait till you were 45, you could probably still do it. And guess what? When mm-hmm. you're 45, you might feel way different about it than you do right now at 35. For sure. And I admire friends like you who just know, like, this is, this is what I want. I can't wait for this. I know it's the right decision. And I'm fine with giving up all of my free time and my hobbies and my, this it's like, wow. Yeah, Cause and I, I don't do, have that certainty. I, I, there is a part of me that's like, man, you're going to, you're going to say goodbye to a lot of things. You're not gonna be able to collect all the shit that you like to collect. You're not gonna be able to sit here and play these games, but I've like really enjoyed and I've had a really great last 15 years. So it's like, you know, if for, it's good I, for you. I think there's we should something- just clip that part of the pod and under it right Cassim realizing he has COVID. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's, it's I feel been like a I great have, run. <laughs> I have so much more to give that I I I can't do it without having a family. I don't think I'll ever truly be able to. You also have so much more to learn that you can't learn without having a kid. Totally. It's I'm looking. You I'm can. always a student. Always a student. A student of life. Wow. You How about guys. that for a pod, this is, huh? This is why we do this pod. Wow. Wow. Uh, this is why look, I'm Melanie you, from Northeast Pennsylvania. Yeah, thank, <laughs> send your emails to askpajamapants at gmail.com. Maybe <laughs> we'll read it just like Melanie and just like Luann's. We'll read it on the pod. Uh, follow us on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Jamie and I are on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm also on TikTok. Rob's off the grid. Do not try and contact him. And if uh, you guys are watching this on YouTube, click subscribe, go to Reddit, r slash pajama pants podcast. We're on there. Join the community. A lot of good memers there. Um, And that's really all I got. Do you guys have anything? Happy, happy to all be back together, even if it's over Zoom. Well, well, yeah, look, we all know how you feel about the Zoom. You can. No, I'm just saying I'm happy that I'm happy that the three of us are together. That's what I was trying to say. Over Zoom. Over Zoom. Well, I'm just saying, you know, even if it's over Zoom, you can't compare when when the three of us are sitting outside in Jamie's outside living room. You can't compare. But I'm coming to Texas all the time. Don't you worry about it.